What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Electric Fly YouTube channel. Today is another exciting day for me because I've got some more mods happening to my 2020 Can-Am Atlander 650 XMR. So if you are familiar with the channel, you would have seen that a few videos ago I picked up these 31 inch System 3 XM 310 mud tires and these things are killer I gotta say. They have been doing awesome in the mud, but there's only one problem. So my problem is, as you can see, is She's riding a little close to my footwell here. I can barely fit, I can't even actually fit my finger between the footwell and the tire right now, which is not good, especially since this is trailing arm suspension, which means that um, basically once the rear end is drooping, um, like so, the rear end actually pulls forward, and once you know it, I have some rubbage, <laughs> a lot of it. So um, obviously don't want to destroy my brand new tires, so I could go ahead and chop the footwell here, but the problem is it also rubs on the inside here, which is really hard to see for you guys right now on the camera. So I do have a solution to getting rid of this problem. Like I said, could trim the footwells and everything, but to be honest, I don't want to chop up my quad and kind of look like the look of it, the way it is kind of OEM-ish and everything, kind of, kind of discreet and whatnot. So I got something different. Boom, right here. I got us some S3 Power Sports extended trailing arms for my quad. So. Why am I doing extended trailing arms instead of aftermarket footwells? Because, well, footwells are a lot cheaper than this, this solution. Well, to be honest, 100% honest, I just don't like the look of aftermarket footwells. Um, I like my quad and any kind of vehicle I like to modify kind of look, to look kind of OEM-ish at the end of the day, but a very modified OEM, but not that kind of modified. I don't like the metal-y look and um, just didn't like the look of it. So instead, we're doing something that's going to be kind of discreet that nobody will really even notice. Um, unless you start looking at the back of my quad and whatnot. So right now I'm gonna grab a knife and open this box up and see what we got inside. All right, let's go ahead and open this box up. Going with the safety third measure. And uh, yeah, this is using a straight razor blade without an actual box cutter. So don't do this at home kids, I guess. <laughs> let's chop this guy a little bit. Let's see what we got. You guys are getting a first look with me here. Hopefully they're the right color. <laughs> Looks like they are. All right. <laughs> now I gotta cut through all this plastic here. Boom, there she is. Wow. They look crazy. Gotta say, the power coat looks really, really good here. It's gonna get beat the crap out of in a little bit anyway. <laughs> but, they look really massive and beefy. Put an S3 logo going there. They said it's powder coated over, so keeping things discreet. But, now, let's get to the actual install of these guys. Let's get the tires off and start tearing apart the quad. Well, it's a good thing I'd take my tire off. I mean, yeah, that's really good for your bearings, turns out. This is what happens when we're making, well, trying to make killer footage for you guys. Hopefully you guys think it's killer. But uh, yeah, it turns out you end up getting nothing but roots and sticks and grass everywhere in your quad. So I'm gonna have to pluck some of this stuff out real quick. We're also gonna be popping off the brake caliber back here. We're gonna be popping off the uh, castle nut here. So we're also gonna have to drill out a popper of it here unbolt this guy here to get the brake line all undone then we have to get in here and I believe this is where oh nope right there yeah I'm gonna do that guy there the big bolt that goes all the way through for the trailing arms and then take the shock off and then it kind of luck the trailing arm is gonna come out so stick around for a time lapse <laughs>
right guys, so I just got the long bolt out. Basically had, how I had to do is I just took a, another rod and kind of pushed the long uh, bolt out from the other side. And um, yeah, it worked pretty good. So now everything is loose here. So hopefully everything will come out of here. Now I know this is like the fun part of Can-Ams is getting this guy out here like that. All right, so got the first trailing arm out. Other side comes out the same way. And then next thing we're gonna be doing is actually getting all the bearings out of the stock arms and getting them pressed into the next one. So stick around for that. So before I go ahead and press the bearings out, I want to show you guys what we're looking at here. So kind of tried to line them up the best I could here. Actually, this one can still go forward a little bit, but so you can see here, the beef is real. And they are a tiny bit heavier than these guys. So you're gaining a little bit of weight. Um, we're not gonna be reusing our stock uh, axle guards, but that's all right. And then we're gonna be reusing these bushings. Now, the only thing they don't have with these guys is the grease fitting. But that's okay because eventually I'm gonna be changing these out for a greaseless. So, no big deal for me. But right now we're gonna go ahead, gotta get these lovely looking bearings out. They should be fine for now. But eventually I'm gonna replace them. But yeah, let's get these things out, get these new arms put together, and get that thing back together. All right, guys, so I have the trailer arm sitting right here. Um, when you take them out, just careful not to lose these guys. These guys are at the end, but they go right at the end of the um, kind of the mud slash dust shield that goes over top of the bearings. Uh, so make sure you guys pop those out and don't lose them. Um, now we're going to go ahead and get the seals off, which is going to be a great old time. And then, yeah, then we also have to take off in order to get into this bearing here. There is a clip that goes around where we have to remove, so that's going to be another great fun one. So wish me luck. So hang on a second. So didn't realize that you can't press the bearings just straight out because of how the trailing arms are designed. Um, so I don't know if you can see it in there, probably not, but there's basically a ridge that goes around that the bearings actually um, kind of seat against. So you have to actually, what you have to do is there's these little spacers that kind of go between the bearings and in, inside. Um, you have to kind of try to take that shift it off to the side. And then I just used a long extension here, uh, like a 12 inch extension. Um, and just hit it against this piece of wood with a hammer and they all popped right out, seals are reusable and everything. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and start putting everything back into the new trailing arms here. This I can use a press for, so hopefully we'll find out. Stick around. Alright guys, so actually one thing I did real quick is I actually ran down to my local Can-Am dealer, um, picked up a new set of wheel bearings because the old ones were seized in there really bad. Turns out when you're riding water a lot, it tends to happen. So actually while I'm doing, um, what I'm just doing real quick is I have those in the freezer and that's going to help with installation, make it a little easier. Um, but in the meantime while I wait for it, um, I just took some light sandpaper and actually this is the, um, the trailing arm rod that goes all the way through that connects the trailing arms to the quad. Um, basically I just sanded it down real quick, made it nice and smooth again, as you can probably see, it's all nice and shiny. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to throw a light uh, layer of anti-seize on here. It's going to make this thing a little easier to take out each time because um, in order to change axles and do stuff like that on this quad, you do have to remove the trailing arms each time. So um, this just makes it a little easier next time. So I'm trying to think ahead. So stay tuned. I'm going to get the um, wheel bearings in next and once that's done, get it back on the quad. So it's actually the next day. Uh, turns out, I could not get these bearings in to save my life. Um, yeah, um, I actually contacted S3 to see what I was doing wrong and everything, but I managed to get one bearing in for the wheel bearing here. That's, that was my problem child here. Um, but I finally got at least one in, kind of got this started and everything, just kind of setting everything in place to see what it's going to look like. But I still got to get the other one in, and then finally, we can start to reassemble this thing. Three weeks later. So it's actually, uh, let's see, two or three weeks later right now. So sorry, it's really sunny out. There we go. There I am. All right, so um, yeah, so what ended up happening was um, the cups for the bearings 
I guess this weren't manufactured correctly. Um, talked to uh, S3 and everything. Ended up um, taking the old arm back. They made me a new arm, powder coated it, sent it back, and I actually, I paid a little extra. They, I didn't pay for the new arm, but I paid extra to have them install all the bearings. So they installed the upper bearings and the, uh, the wheel bearings and everything. So this way, I didn't have to worry about doing that. If you guys are ordering them, I would definitely recommend having them do it. So this way you don't have to worry about it. But yeah, so they completely helped me out and everything and they were really cool about it. So I gotta thank them for that. But finally we can continue putting these arms back in. It's actually, like I said, a couple weeks later we went to Tall Pines and everything, had a fun time there. Uh, but did have some rubbing going on. So can't wait to get these arms on and get this all taken care of so this way I can ride my quad without any rubbing. So let's get to it. I gotta tear my quad back apart. It's still pretty dirty from tall finds, but uh, got to take everything back apart. So here's a quick time lapse of that. Okay, so back, basically back to where we left off here. All right, so you got your bearings finally pressed in. <laughs> so now what we're gonna have to do is we have to transfer over our shock or our sway bar bushings here. If I can get them out, you might need a, a screwdriver or something to push in the backside, or you can wiggle it like this. Now, one thing with these arms is there's no more grease fitting. You can drill and tap some grease fittings in, but eventually when these guys go, I'm actually just gonna be upgrading to the uh, greaseless fittings. Gonna use a dab of some grease here. A little bit much of a dab, oops. <laughs> Sometimes a little too much. All right. All right, and the other thing you're gonna wanna transfer over is these little end deals for the uh, upper bearings. So you don't want to lose these guys. Oops, as I drop one in the dirt. That is good. Boom, just like that. Now that guy's ready to go in. Just gotta do the same thing to the other arm here. And uh, she's ready to go back together here. All right, time to go back together. I think I mentioned this before. I'm just wiping off all the old indices, but what I did last time that made this super easy to get out was I lathered this guy in some good old indices. So, definitely makes it a little easier to get it out. Gotta love indices, it gets all over the place, but you know, it helps us get our quad apart easier each time. Just give it a light coat all over it. Just like that. Keeps everything nice and free. All right, time to get this in. Now this is kind of a two-man operation, but I'm on my own today, so I'm making it a single-man one. Oh boy, these guys are hefty. So basically, reverse of putting it together. Kind of have to slide the axle in. Work it in slowly here. That's it, the axe wants to play nicely. Come on, buddy. There she goes. slides in there like so and here's the fun part is trying to line this guy up there she goes Basically, you want to start the other side 
Don't want it to go through all the way yet. Cut. All right, so like I said my torque wrench doesn't go as high as the torque specifications. So 150 will have to do. There she is. Woo. Yeah, that's a workout. All right, now everything is basically goes back together um, exactly the same as factory. So we're gonna reconnect our sway bar, the shock, and then I'll catch you guys when I get to remounting the brakes because that's a little bit different. Brakes are gonna be set up a little bit differently now. So you're actually gonna remove these two clips down the line. We're gonna keep this one because that one's still gonna go back up top here. Basically, oh. Oh, should probably go get my new brake pads I have for this. Yep, I think we're gonna do that while we have this apart. All right, got my nice new pads on there. Figured I'd change them out because mine are starting to get a little bit worn as you can probably see. There you go, camera focused. So we're going on a trip in a few weeks, so I wanna make sure my quad is up to par. So now um, we're gonna be redoing our brakes here, putting them back on. I don't know just yet, because I didn't look at the directions, why would I do that? Um, but I don't know if we need, okay, we're gonna need that guy, aren't we? Yes, we are. So either you have to get washers or you have to reuse the lovely mud scraper, which I know a lot of us love so very much. Get that started now. The only thing I don't understand is how they welded on that brake there, because that'll rub there, so I think we're just gonna attach it there and okay, just put a zip tie around there just to kind of hold it there. You gotta make sure that your screw does not hit your brake rotor. Should be good. Boom, so yeah, just gotta grab a zip tie, zip tie there. I'm gonna zip tie it here as well. Like I said, I'm not sure they put the um, brake line thing on so it goes this way, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because then it'd be way too tight like that. It can't go the other way, so I'm just gonna use that to kind of hold it down, set, and then zip tie there. And then, uh, yeah, we just gotta get the wheels back on. Fire this thing up for a test drive and make sure everything's working like it should. All right, folks, and there she is. Actually, I gotta say, the quad has a more natural look to it now as far as the uh, trailing arms and stuff go. And the clearance to the footwells looks really good. So now I just gotta go for a quick test drive and see how everything works out. So now I got a stupid amount of room, which maybe can fit some 32s or 33s, I believe, which would be awesome. Everything looks good in here. No rubbing issues or anything with the brake line or anything. Everything looks good. So, right now, let's go for a quick little, little rip. All right guys, so, let's take the quad down the driveway and everything felt really good. Didn't feel any clunks or anything like that. Hitting some bumps and everything. And uh, yeah, she felt really good. So, um, yeah, obviously with the rear end being extended now, wheelies are gonna be a bit tougher, but um, that's why I usually don't wheelie on, gra on the, uh, solid ground anyway, I usually just do water wheelies and stuff, so should still do that. So with that, that's gonna end the install of the S3 extended trailing arms. Uh, make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. Um, if you're new here, please consider subscribing because uh, it really helps us out. We're trying to reach uh, 3,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, and obviously, you guys can follow us on our social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all the good stuff. And uh, we'll just have to catch you guys next time on Let Deer Fly. Have you forgotten?